and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So if you saw one of my recent videos on InMarsat Easy Decoding, well, you might find this video interesting. I'm just gonna go through a few different pieces of software that you can use, and I'm also gonna cover a bit of software that I didn't in my last video. So at the moment, I've got a patch antenna connected to an AirSpy receiver, and we've got SDR Sharp loaded. Now I'm currently tuned into the NCS channel on InMarsat, and I'm using a special plugin called SkyTow C on SDR Sharp, which is decoding the packets and sending them out on a local broadcast UDP port. What we're then doing is using the quick UI for SkyTow C to receive those packets and decode them into messages. As you can see here, as the packets are being decoded, they're being sent over to the quick UI is picking those up. Now, how does this differ to the software that I had before? Well, before we were using the actual SkyTel C software and we were routing the audio output from SDR Sharp into the audio input of SkyTel C. We was then using this application, SkyTel C Quick UI, to actually look and read something tangible. So what this plugin does, as you can see down here, this eliminates the need to route SDR Sharp's audio to SkyTel C software. This means you don't have to mess around with like VB audio and things like that. So let me just quickly show you how you install this plugin. It's exactly the same way you would install any other plugin on SDR Sharp. So the first thing we're going to need to do is actually download the plugin. I'll leave a link for this website down in the description below. The file that we're looking for here is the X64 SDR Sharp SkyTel C, and this version here is 10213. Now what you wanna do is go ahead and download that zip file. Now once you've downloaded that zip file, just uncompress it and you will be able to see the files within that zip file. Now we're looking for here all of these files, but there's one particular file that we need to look at, and that's called magicline.txt. If we just go ahead and open that file, this is essentially like an XML piece of code. Now what we need to do is we need to copy that line and now we need to go to your SDR Sharp installation. So go to SDR Sharp folder where you've installed it and locate a file called plugins. Open that plugins file and you'll see a lot of other similar entries in this file. Simply copy and paste it at the end or wherever you want it to show in the side menu and then click save. Now that's not all you need to do. Once you've edited the plugins.xml file, you need to go back to your zip extracted folder, copy all of the files, except obviously magicline.txt, and then go back to your SDR Sharp installation folder, the same place where the plugins.xml was, and paste those files in. Please note that you probably be best to have SDR Sharp closed while you're doing this. Once those files have been pasted into the installation folder, simply go back to SDR Sharp and you'll now see on the left hand side the SkyTel-C plugin. In this example, like mentioned before, I'm tuned in to the NCS channel on InMarsat. So with the SkyTel-C plugin expanded, I've got enabled ticked. What I've also got ticked is auto tracking. What you also notice is you have a UDP address, it's probably best to leave that to local host, and you've got a UDP port which is set to 15003. You may as well leave them as standard unless you know what you're doing and you can change them to something else. Now if the signal's strong enough and it's been able to lock on, you'll get this green locked word in the SkyTel C plugin. This means that it's everything's pretty much good to go and it's decoding that channel and it's sending those packets out on the UDP port selected in the plugin. So this is where you go over and load up the quick UI. Now, if you look here in the top left-hand corner of the quick UI, you'll see the ports which it's actually receiving on. If you notice, it's 15003, which is the port, which is the SkyTel C plugin on SDR Sharp is outputting those packets to. As you can see here, while we're talking, the packets tab is receiving bits of data. 
Well, that's coming from the Skytel C plugin on SDR Sharp. There's no need to run the actual main Skytel C application. So I think that's a quite neat little solution, which is great if you don't want to mess around with the B audio cable. Well, unfortunately, if you want to pick up things like Aero, which is the uh, aeroplane ACARS uh, uh, messaging system, then you will need to still use VB audio cable. So let's take another quick look at Aero and what it can do. So this application J Aero, this allows us to select one of the ACARS channels uh, on InMarsat. Now it can either be 600 BPS, it can be 1200 BPS or 10,500 BPS, depending on which frequency you select. Now the one that we're looking at here is very narrow band, so this is obviously a 600 BPS transmission. Now J Aero is really easy to use. What you need to do is obviously set your audio output from a SDR Sharp to something like VB audio cable and then within the settings of J Aero just make sure that your sound card selection is select to the cable output VB audio virtual cable. This will guarantee that the audio that's coming out of SDR Sharp is going to be piped into J Aero. Now as you can see on the screen I have SDR Sharp tuned to a 600 BPS ACARS transmission. The bandwidth I'm set to is 4 kilohertz or or thereabouts and the mode of modulation is upper sideband. Now in J Aero you'll see this little audio screen you'll be able to see here a nice little peak now that is where the data is being transmitted. One of the options is called AFC automatic frequency control so if you start the application and the audio is not being decoded correctly then the AFC should automatically track to where that packet of data is. So what we're actually decoding here are messages sent from the ground station to the aircraft and it's actually via InMarsat. So these messages are not direct, you can't, we're not picking them up from directly from the ground station. They're going via InMarsat and then to the aircraft, but we are receiving them as if we were an aircraft and we're decoding them. Something that is quite cool is if you click on this button here, this shows up the plane log. Now, as you can see over here, it's actually recording the registration of each of the planes which it's received the message for. It's also showing the carrier and it's also showing the type of aircraft. So like, for example, this one here, this is Air Europa and this is an Airbus A330. Now, if we click on the plane, this is quite cool. It will actually take us to flightradar24.com website where it's looked up the tail number and it actually shows us a picture of the plane. But not only that, it actually shows us the schedule that it's actually doing right now. So this is pretty cool. This window will also show you some notes about that message. It will give you information from the database and it will also give you the last message that was sent from the ground station that was meant for that aircraft. As mentioned before, we're looking at a 600 BPS channel. If we switch over to one of the other channels, just by changing frequency as, you, as I've done here, just go back to Jero. And you can see that the transmission is slightly wider here and it's not decoding. The volume's okay, but there's no signal or data. So what we need to do is just change this to 1200 BPS and just centralize that. And hopefully what should happen is it will start receiving data. There we go. So if you've got three green lights, that's absolutely brilliant. Now, please bear in mind that this volume indicator is quite important. It'll either be gray, which means the audio is too low, or if you've got your volume up too high, as in the volume on SDR Sharp software or whatever SDR software you're using, if it goes red, it means it's too loud. So green, green, green means you should have a successful decode. And then obviously after monitoring this for a while, you'll start to get messages come through. So another piece of software that I want to take a look at is the STDC decoder from Techmanoid. Now this is a paid application and you can contact him directly if you wish to purchase this software. Unfortunately, there is no demo version anymore and you do have to pay for it, but that's not a problem because it's a really good piece of software. So I'm currently tuned to the NCS channel on SDR Sharp. I have the audio output routed through VB Audio so the STC decoder can pick it up and this is what it looks like. 
So I've only just started this, so there's nothing tangible that we can have a look at from live from now. But one of the good things about this is that it easily shows us here where the packets are coming from. So we have the reg here, A-O-R-E, over here on the right hand side. It also shows us some other information as well, such as the channel number that we're actually listening to and the channel type. Now we already know that it's an NCS channel, but it's nice to see that it's actually confirmed. Now we can see here that we are picking up the frames as it's going along. You can see there was one there, 7661, which was lost unfortunately. Uh, that could have been because there was some noise or something interfered with the signal or the decoding. We have some nice indications over in the left top side. So it shows us a nice green bar for the volume. Signal quality is averaging about 65% at the moment, but the quality is actually 100%. We have a sync and a CRC indication as well. Now underneath all this, we have three tabs. We have terminal, EGC, and LES. So we have nothing come through on the terminal at the moment, but if we have a look at EGC, now these entries in here are over a week old. This is when I was testing the software. And to view each one, we can simply just click on them and it provides us all the information from that particular bulletin. We have a nice priority block here. As you can see here, these are safety messages. And if we go over to the LES messages, this is where we can have a quick look. And as you can see, these are actually decoded about a week or so ago as well. What's nice about this software is that if there are any coordinates located in the message that's being sent, such as these safety messages, you can see that it actually put like a, a block or an area on the map that's over here and you can see which area they're talking about. Again here, here's another example. So as you can see here, where they've put out this massive block, that's because it says here they're doing some seismic surveys and underwater operations in progress. So that's quite interesting. I mean, obviously this is over a week old, so I think it should be okay to show these messages. I mean, it's not like it's something that happened today. Obviously, the longer you leave this running, uh, the more messages you're going to get because what happens is it sends it frame by frame. And then once the appropriate number of frames have been sent and received, it puts them together and you're presented with one of these messages as shown here. So there you go, guys. It was just a, a quick video update on the sort of a few different pieces of software that you can go ahead and use to receive and decode uh, information and data coming from InMarsat. Just out of interest, the uh, in antenna that I'm using on here is the same antenna that was in my last video. I've got some interesting videos coming up on it in Marsat in the next few weeks, so keep an eye out for that, especially uh, with regards to uh, maybe different antennas and uh, and things like that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and, and until the next one, you take care and I'll see you in the next video.